like to rise to give my support to the mover of this resolution that's currently before the House being debated. And like the second, I'll give my full support to this resolution. Mr. Speaker, we are here for a very serious matter. And I hope we do not get too distracted with the speaker has just sat down. Yes. Um, the leader of the opposition, the member for number six, the right honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas, has made livid some accusations at me and my office, yes. as he has done in the past. And I think in the context of this debate that I have to respond. And so I would crave your indulgence to say one or two things on that matter. But Mr. Speaker, as I said, this is a very serious matter we're here for. And the country, this is not a puppy show. It's not a, some of what is going on can be laughable. And can theatrics and give some fun. If you were not so serious at that. Mr. Speaker, this threat presented but the COVID-19 pandemic is not yet over. It's very real. We must therefore continue to take the necessary action to protect the people of this federation. As having indicated before, Mr. Speaker, we have taken a phased and measured approach in seeking to efficaciously address the pandemic. And we do not take lightly the serious measures that we are now contemplating. With the severity of this most recent wave in which we have found ourselves, it is therefore incumbent upon us to adopt urgent, life-saving interventions to halt this deadly wave in its tracks. And so, Mr. Speaker, it is through the use of the Constitution, which contemplates the advancement of such measures in situations like these that we are here for. The member for Constituency 6, the right honorable gentleman, has spoken to questions of incompetence and mismanagement of the COVID response. And I would like to draw to his attention, Mr. Speaker, that this pandemic was declared a worldwide, a global pandemic by the WHO early last year. And even before the WHO had declared it a pandemic, we here in St. Giza Nevis took the necessary steps to put in place a regime to combat this pandemic, that response. Mr. Speaker, it was not easy. We met a number of times with the White Honorable Gentleman and his representatives early last year when he tried to negotiate some relaxation of the measures that we are doing, he thought it that we should not have closed our borders, yeah. or if the borders were closed, to have them relaxed so that he would be able to pursue his own individual political objectives. Yes. To the extent that that was challenged in the courts of law in this country, and the court spoke most definitively and rejected his claim that the state of emergency that had been instituted last year should not have been done so. At one point, that we, I think we drew that claim, but challenged the question as to the time 
the length of time or how it was stated that it was not clear enough. Just like he's doing now, that we are having six months, why six months, and so forth. And it's unfortunate, Mr. Speaker, that someone who has been risen to the very high office of Prime Minister of our country should come here today to try and cast all sorts of noise, I think disaffection, on what we are trying to do today. I want to, however, start on this question of of incompetence because the right honorable gentleman well knows that just last year we had a situation where the Attorney General saw it fit to um, move the court in a matter related to the same gentleman. And I talk about the Attorney General of St. Christopher and Nevis and Dr. Denzel Douglas. And on the 12th of March last year, at the height of when we are doing the preparations for this pandemic, the Honorable Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court was moved to make a judgment on the Honorable Gentleman. And I would want to just read from that judgment. The respondent, Dr. Douglas, is a citizen of St. Christopher Nevis, the leader of the opposition and a member of parliament. Having been elected to the National Assembly or the Assembly, at the invitation of the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Dr. Douglas applied for a Dominican diplomatic passport. He completed a passport application form with the exception of two columns of the form which required him to represent himself as a Dominican citizen, yes. which he was not. The diplomatic passport was issued to Dr. Douglas by the government of Dominica and the, I'm sorry. I'm failing to understand the, the, the link between this Dominica, this passport case and the state of emergency that we are currently discussing. If the member of, if the member who is speaking could kindly explain why the Dominican passport issue is relevant. Attorney General, um, you, you mind? Could you advise the, the, the House of yes, that link? I mean, you, I you, find it a valid point of and I thank, order. I thank the Senator opposite for yes. raising this. The member for number six, as government says, that this Attorney General is incompetent. Yes. And here was a case yes. in which I showed competence in having the court move he like to show him. <laughs> That is your competence? We are, yes. That is my competence. <laughs> you are kicked out of this that house. Is you are kicked out of this house. That is your competence. You are kicked um, out of honorable, this honorable house. members, I would allow the... I took you to court. I would allow the got removed honorable, from this court house. honorable members. Yeah. Honorable members. Uh, that's the interesting thing about debates here. Yes. Once members yes. raise yes. certain yes. matters and accuse others, Others have a right to defend yourself. I will defend myself. I am satisfied. Honorable members, I am satisfied. Thank you. I am satisfied that having been accused of some incompetency, that the Honorable AG is in his right to provide some evidence of his competency. Can't move on, please. So that is incompetence. That's evidence. You said I lose all my cases. Me, I never said it like that. You said that all over town, to me in my face. 
You tell me that lose cases. I lose this one though. I kick you out of parliament. You don't want to hear it? Y'all don't want to hear this? This case can be found, Mr. Speaker, on www.ecquotes.org. Okay? And anyone who wants to read it can go and look at what the Chief Justice has said. Yes. I'll just go straight to what she held. Held allowing the appeal declaring that Dr. Douglas is required to vacate his seat in the assembly sure. and ordering that each party shall bear their own cause before this court in below. And she goes on to say that he was disqualified and why he's disqualified to sit in this court, in this house. Because he claimed to be a Dominican, got Dominican passport. Yeah. And he's leader of the opposition, former Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. Member must take it back. He's saying that I claim to be a Dominican. Which Never did, Mr. Speaker. Okay, you're a Dominican. Never did. So he has to take it back. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. The judgment did not say that he claimed so that. I withdraw it. Exactly. But he had a Dominican diplomatic passport so parading so up and down the place. Yeah. So what? It's no so big what? deal. No so big what? deal. Incompetence and mismanagement. Yes. Huh? So that is your huh? defense, so Mr. Speaker, that's what. Order. That's what. Exactly. Order. Mr. Speaker, we came to this parliament, you know, and I think it would have been the 12th of October last year, when the same Denzel Douglas, Honorable Denzel Douglas, with two other members of his party, yes. huh? the Honorable Congress Maynard and the Honorable Marcella Lightbody, took me to court. October? You took me to court last year October? in the midst, one week before the elections. You said October. That the judgment was passed on that day here, that same morning, and brought down the judgment. Winston Justice Ward said, You all didn't have no case. You had no case. So you're competent. You took me to court, me to so court. You're huh? you are the same state of emergency. You, are you said if there was no need to have a state of emergency. So you are huh? that. Mr. Speaker, I could go on and on. You want to talk about the boundaries case? You want to talk about boundaries? Huh? When you come in here with five minutes emergency, five minutes, five minutes notice, five minutes notice for emergency sitting of the parliament to um through. Push through, changing the boundaries. Privy Council, all the courts that we go before, kick you out of court. So you are complaining? Uh, nonsense you're talking you about. Mr. Speaker, That's three cases Mr. I, I could go on, but I'll stop there. Mr. 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 Speaker, Mr. Oh, yeah. Mr. Speaker, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Speaker, I have the privilege of being assigned by the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis to chair and co-chair the Disaster Mitigation Council of this country. And in that position, we oversee the work of the National COVID-19 Task Force. For the entire period, up to the end of the state emergency, December 31st, 2020, and until May 19th, St. Kitts and Nevis stood proud and tall in this hemisphere, not the region, the hemisphere of having the best managed um, program in response to COVID-19. Yes. The best managed yes. by any standard, anywhere in the world. So you're yes. confident? Huh? So you're confident? You know, and the whole country knows, we had 45 cases, not one death. And you come here today, to say that we're making mistakes? You made a lot of mistakes. Huh? In those 45, you mean you should have got more people killed? You should have got people killed? Come on. You should have got more cases? Come on. We did what was needed to protect the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Yes. And for you to come here today, you need to apologize to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Well, huh? Look now, you're going to have your chance. You'll have your chance. Okay? Mr. Speaker. When the leader of the opposition comes here today to challenge the work done by a whole set of senior public servants in this country, the Commission of Police, 
and his team, the commander of the dance force, yes. the chief medical officer, yes. the medical chief of staff. Yes. You go through permanent secretaries yes. in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, yes. permanent secretary in tourism, permanent secretary in health, the, the people at immigration, the chief immigration officer, yes. huh? customs representatives, Casper, the senior public servants of this country who work 24-7, yes. they don't sleep. Every day they meet, up to last night they're meeting mm -hmm. to try and work out what to happen in this country. Yes. And here comes this gentleman to degrade their work, degrade? their public service. Yes. They don't get one penny extra, not one penny extra. They don't speaker, sleep. On the point of and order. All hours of the day night. Speaker, you come here order. to on challenge the point that. of order. What nonsense. Yes. I have not degraded the work of anyone. He needs to take that back. I said that the government is incompetent. The government is incompetent. The leadership of the government is incompetent. I was very clear. I was very, very clear. So don't dodge out of it. I said that you were incompetent. You were incompetent. That is what I said. And the Prime Minister as well. I ain't call nobody the civil servant's name. That is not true. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. That's incompetent. I take umbrage, Mr. Speaker, of the work of the National COVID Task Force in this country. Because they've done an excellent job in the management, the management of the COVID response. And everybody in this country knows we have letters from all sorts, all sorts. And it doesn't have anything to do with anything in politics. Because supporters of his party have written and commended the, the, the task force. They've brought money in contributions to show their support, physical support. The commander volunteer. Yes. That had nothing to do because the back labor or the back somebody else. They come to work in our country to ensure that do what is best for this country in fighting this pandemic. And, they volunteer. and we have done yes. an exceptionally good job. That is why we are here today. Because on the 19th of May, there was an issue. We always knew that no matter how well we did it, there could be the chance for some one person to slip through. And we'll have to deal with it. And so it was not, it will never happen. We understood. And what have we done? Since that one case, there has been an exceptional set of work by the Ministry of Health in terms of arresting this spread. Hundreds, thousands of people have been contacted and tested. Yeah. People work in the morning. Some of them start at 4 o'clock in the morning and work until 10 at night. Going all over the country in groups yeah. to test people, to test, to, to, to swab them and have them tested in labs. The contact tracing is better than anywhere else in the region. It's better. And you mentioned Dr. Laws, poor Dr. Laws. She can't drop your hands, she's working at it. Yes. Because that is why we believe that we can contain this. Because the contacts will be ring-fenced, they will be tested, they will be quarantined. If it is that they are, they're tested positive, they'll be isolated. And we will reduce the numbers. We will reduce the numbers of people who are positive cases. And when that happens, we can then reopen up the country because we have always had, from the very beginning, a very clear focus, yes. plan, on how we would deal with this matter of the response to COVID. Yes. We were very tight at the beginning, very tight. There was a state of emergency and we had strict lockdowns. Then we eased them curfews, limited days of operation, and we eased them. And we got to a point where people in this country were saying, no COVID yet. We ain't gonna COVID. 
It was managed in such a way that the people had a sense, a false sense, that we were okay. And many of us dropped our guard. We eased again and eased again. It was a clear plan. The leader of the opposition, the man for number six, said there was no plan. But anybody could see that there was a clear plan that worked. Up to this 31st of December, we got the thing under control. It was a plan. We gave notice three months at a time, we will open the borders yes. on the 1st of November. We had a clear plan. Clear plan. Clear. There was that opening up. And we developed what is an exceptionally efficient program that we call the current of containment. When somebody lands at the airport, Mr. Speaker, or before you land at the airport, we have created an exceptional online program form, the KDA travel form, that is manned and managed by immigration, customs, health, national security. All of them look at that form and approve each and every person who comes into St. Kitts. You upload a PCR test that is checked before you get on a plane. We do all that is necessary to protect the people of St. Nevis. A clear plan that has worked efficiently, seamlessly, that will nobody even hear about it. When you get to the airport and you're checked physically now, you see if there are documents in an order, and you then go to the airport. You just don't go to the family. You are met with a COVID certified taxi operator. Those operators have been trained, they have been trained and trained. They have gone and fixed up their vehicles. The drivers are separated from passengers with a plexiglass. All of them have sanitizers. Yes. They are separated, physically distanced from the, from the people. Service. Nobody gets into their taxis with a mask. The non-pharmaceutical measures that have been put in place. And this is in November last year, you know. Not one case has been found because of that. It has worked efficiently to say that it's mismanaged and it's not working good. Dr. Douglas needs to apologize to those taxes operators. He needs to apologize to the Ministry of Tourism and Tourism Authority who have put those people to training and insisted to give them a certified decal that I have not training for this. Once you get in that certified taxi, you're taken to a certified, a COVID certified quarantine site. A COVID certified hotel. When you get there, they are received by people who have been trained. This is nothing new. Hundreds, thousands of people have gone through this process in our country. Not just here in St. Kitts, but in Nevis. To get to Nevis, there's a COVID certified ferry that has been certified. We have responded to this pandemic in a way never before. Having 45 cases up until the 9th of May, of May in just happened. The government and the task force working with them, the public servants, the technical people in our country, can't be bigged up enough. We have worked and worked and worked. One, two, three times a week, people meet. All over the damn night, back and forth. And you say that is mismanagement? Yeah. That you can't work it? You're out of place. Yeah. You're out of place. Yeah. Huh? You're out of place. You don't live here. What you're going on is talking about inefficient yeah. mismanagement. The kind of containment has been exceptional. Yeah. Which is why, Mr. Speaker, that when we have our current regulations, we have not closed the borders. Yes. That is why we have not closed the borders. Yes. Because the state of emergency, the state of emergency gives us the authority yes. to restrict movement. Yes. 
Movement in the country, movement in and out of the country. Yes. But we have not seen fit to have to close the borders because we manage people in and manage people out seamlessly. It's efficient, so you don't even hear about it. Yes. There's no problem with it. We are managing people who are coming into country by jets. We have on Wednesday, we have on Saturday, we have on Sunday. The regular flights have been coming. Yes. Delta's added. What's the other one that's added? They're adding the flights. BA wants to come. People come to St. Kitts and Nevis because they feel that we have in place regimes that are better than anywhere else in the region. That's why they come here. Yes. I met somebody going to Nevis the other day from Alaska. Alaska. Oh, he comes to St. Kitts because the sea. What we are doing, MSR media over in Nevis, shooting movies that entered the contract in Nevis administration. Six movies, they're going to be doing movies in St. Kitts. These people came here because of our COVID management, because it's effective, it's efficient. Yes. No other place, they went to Barbie, they went to other islands, they went to other places, but they come here. So you can't be there? Huh? Put you out of here though. That's the confidence to do. I'll push you out of here. You get kicked out the first man ever. The first man to ever get kicked out of this parliament. You. You get kicked out of here. Hmm? Yeah? Officially kicked out by the Chief Justice. Huh? You. That's good, but you get kicked out though. I got that in my pocket. However, you can't take back that. You can't take back that. That's where you attack me today. That, that's where you attack me today. It hurt you. Anyway, let me move on. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. This state of emergency. I never expected, Mr. Mr. Speaker. I never expected, Mr. Speaker, that we'd be having this debate. I never really expected it because the, the success of our country in managing this pandemic has been permanent. We have done an exceptional job and it's, I, I can't understand what really the issue. I hear Dr. Douglas say, the member for number six, why do we go for six months? Why do we have six months? So that is part of the problem. So let me answer the six months. Because we had that same problem last year. And obviously he didn't hear and didn't learn when he took us to court and lost. He didn't understand it. It was six months. Huh? It was six months. Yeah, he should have learned. It was six months. He was afraid it would be 12 months. Mm -hmm. He thought there would be no election. He thought it would be this. But it was managed properly. And he needs to understand. Can I heard him say something about how it's locked down for six months? I didn't say locked down for six months. You said it. All of us heard you. It might have been a slip. It could have been a slip. Well, maybe it could have been a slip, but you said it. And the idea is, because he knew that we had functions. We had functions last year under the state of emergency. We ran an election on the We ran an election and he lost. That's right. He had a jam session in St. Paul's and he, he lost. lost. <laughs> yeah. I can't understand this. Where we live in? You went to Levy huh? and you lost. You understand? Dr. Douglas knows that we opened the country under state of emergency. Yes. We reduce the hours for curfew. Yes. We open up limited days. People thought that we are living as normal. We almost got back to a point of normalcy. We almost got back to a point of normalcy. Yes. And Mr. Speaker, what has happened? There is a balance that this government yes. tried to manage. Because we believe, and this is where we come to it. We talk about vaccination, so let me come to talk to vaccination. You are talking about vaccination? Give me a minute. I heard you. I didn't answer you. I didn't throw up you. We believe that we would hold strain until enough people in our country 
are vaccinated. Yes. That is the strategy. And the majority. We will be restricting until people get vaccinated. That's the and if enough people get vaccinated, we those who are not vaccinated, we will be a small enough number not to make us stop and close down. Yeah, we, that is the strategy. It's a very clear, broad objective, very clear plan that if enough people get vaccinated, our office got 10 people, eight of them vaccinated, two of them vaccinated, that should be a comfortable arrangement to manage. We want all of them vaccinated, but we can live with a limited number. Why not? And, and the question is, the question is that we start off from the beginning, from the very beginning, we knew that 30% of our population would not get vaccinated. We knew that because we say 18 years and over got be vaccinated. 18 and under would not be vaccinated. And those are 30% of the population. So we knew from the beginning that everybody could not be vaccinated. Yeah, but still people lose their jobs. Statistically, Mr. Speaker, we knew that the 70% of the adult of the population, which is the entire adult population, that statistically we did not get 100% of them. It could be 60, it could be 65, the higher the level, the closer we get to that 100% of, of, of the thing, we're glad. Better. But it's better. Yeah. But if you get enough people who got double doses of the vaccine, Strong. we can come back now to start to live with normalcy. Yes. What has happened, Mr. Speaker, is that when on the 19th of May, we had this um, case, and they become a cluster. And we thought we could contain it with contact tracing. We are very concerned. And we continue not to lock down immediately because the contact tracing we felt could contain it. People moved to schools. We checked all the schools. One or two positive cases, the contacts, we dealt with them and controlled it. But Mr. Speaker, over the last two weeks, when we had seen that the numbers were not subsiding, we did measures to try to make people stop moving. Because the real challenge when there is a spread is that if people move, if you travel from challengers to town, you walk around town, and you travel somewhere else, you could put upon somebody who might be positive, might not even know the positive, and you get it. You take it back home, and the people in your house who don't know you got it, and they don't know they got it, they move again. So we need to slow down that movement. We need to restrict it. And if we don't move for two weeks, just two weeks, the, the virus will stay where it is and subside. Because that's the incubation period. Okay. After two weeks, the incubation period dies. And so the strategy, the plan is for two weeks, we restrict movement. Restrict movement. The compassion that Dr. Douglas is talking about is that for two weeks, some people can put the fridge food for two weeks. There are some people who need assistance. And I shut up to believe that Dr. Douglas has not heard the permanent secretary for health once, twice, three times last week speaking to the nation that the social system is doing hundreds of packages daily to share with people. Yeah, after you started. I'm not going to go back and forth with over you with them argument. That, that, yeah, yeah, that's a distraction. That's a distraction. Exactly that, that, that's a distraction. Thank you. I heard you. I didn't disrupt you. I did not disrupt you. You understand? But this is what is in the country. There's some people need assistance. And they're getting assistance. To say that nobody gets assistance is wrong. And you're misleading the country. And so when it is, the honorable move of the resolution, the honorable prime minister, 
said that you're spreading falsehoods in the country. Yeah. You've got to be careful how you talk. I, you have to be careful. You have, to be, you have to be careful because you are spreading disaffection. Where there's no need, where there's no need for it. Come on. The country. It's not spreading upon the border. Come on, come on. Um, on you can't be making those statements on about the year. I remember from number six. I know where you're going with that point of order. It's allowed. It's just an opinion. Yeah, but what about expressed. when I spoke earlier? It's just an opinion being It was expressed. my opinion too. I want to remember that you are spreading disaffection. It's just an opinion. I said I, it was incompetent. I took very strong attention to that. He has responded. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do I not know if my friend, you know? What? Be my friend, you know? You are my friend. That's why I in the parliament. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. <what> <laughs> you know? Mr. Speaker, I came here to talk about this resolution and I wanted to give a sort of legal opinion as to the whole thing. But it was important to respond and defend the task force up to yesterday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. These public servants have been coming out of the house to meet. He don't want to talk about it. They're the ones who meet daily. They're on the front line. Is that they're not, is that they're not functioning? And it's not, and it's not right. The people working hard and they're doing a good job. And you come telling about the mismanaging what? The, the whole question, the whole question of the corridor can come and going. The other issues having to work with hoteliers, quarantine sites, trying to manage the people has been working. What we have is a spike in our country that we need to contain. And the idea of restrictions that people do not move, as we have begun to move over the last six months, unwittingly people are spreading it. And we want a break in that movement, a short break. And in the next two weeks, we get back to our lives. Because we believe that we'll get control of this current outbreak. And that is just a simple plan. And it, it will work. What will happen after next week, at the end of this current arm thing? The idea is that there will come a time where we have to do some restriction to some of the activities. We'll gradually open as we get better at it. But should we go to party every night? Where we be close on each other? And in the space of drinking and so on, we have, an, we have the potential to transmit the disease. I don't know the exact recommendations that will come from our, te our, our technical people and the health experts. But the idea fundamentally is that some restrictions will continue as we try to adapt and more people get vaccinated. And as more people get vaccinated, if there is, God forbid, another cluster, it will not get into a community spread because enough people are vaccinated so that it will not spread. It's a simple mathematic. Once you understand the principle, you don't understand what the government has been done, what has been recommended, and what we are endorsing. That once you restrict movement now, once it is that we do the, the vaccination program and enough people become vaccinated, it reduces the thing. Let me talk about this thing that he's talking about because I don't understand what that has to it. <laughs> Dr. Douglas is a medical doctor, the member for number six. But he knows you can't talk about patients' medical records. You know you cannot discuss it. You cannot discuss patients' records. You know that. Come on. And it's all going to go to, to have something to excite people about. It's, excite, it's exciting. Uh, exciting people. You've got to be careful with patients' records. I am not asking you. You understand? And I'm saying, 
Careful. You've got to be more responsible than that. Can you keep pushing the point? Pushing the point. What about case 47? What about case 47? Yes. But you say it's so common. Let me go back again. Okay. Let me, well, let me tell you something else that you don't seem to know. Okay. I do you know. You're being irresponsible. Tell me, tell me. People come here, Mr. Speaker, fully vaccinated with a PCR test. PCR tests are negative at the airport. From a reputable lab, where will they come from? You land here. There's obviously documentation to say that you're COVID certified, you're, you, you are vaccinated fully. Pfizer, whatever it is, that you have a card to say you have been tested on day one, negative. But from day one, we've been told that it takes 14 days for incubation to happen. So although you're negative on day one, you're going to quarantine, you go to a hotel, on day 14 when you're tested, we, are, we got, when it's 14 day, everyone is tested in quarantine, everyone. On day 14, when you're tested again, more than one person who has been fully vaccinated has been found to be positive. Fully vaccinated? In fully vaccinated. The first, the, the first case. The first case. The first case. The first, it has been said before. The first case of the Four Seasons in February or March. The person who was vaccinated with Pfizer came from the United States of America and stayed at Four Seasons. That low antibodies, they were not viral spreader, but you could contract it. He was not seriously ill. He showed no no symptoms. He was asymptomatic, but he had the virus in him. And we know, and you know, that you could contract it even though you're you're vaccinated. It was not. What are you saying to the public? It was said to the public. No. That's not what you said in your briefest. No, come on. You know it's been said business. before. Food Dr. Food Dr. Food Winkler said that keeps saying it. Not because you're vaccinated don't mean that you got an armor. You could contract the disease, but you won't get seriously ill. You would not get seriously ill. You would not die if you're properly vaccinated. If you have underlying conditions, if you have other comorbidities, those will exacerbate your situation. I'm a doctor, but it's a layman could understand that. I'm a doctor, I'm not as good a doctor as here, but I never said say that. But let people understand these questions. As a layman, we understand that. And I expect you, Dr. Douglas, to help us explain that to people. Exactly, but that's not I expect you to explain that. You didn't hear what the Prime Minister said? I expect you to explain that. Me? We expect you to explain that. After what you just said this morning? Hmm? After who what said? That I show you out here, you mean? You mean me? No, 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 no. Huh? You didn't hear the words at the time by the Prime Minister? You didn't I, let me tell you, let me move oh. on. Let me move on. Because this oh, is very, very important. Said. It is very, very important to our people. What we are doing is to try to protect our people. And the first thing to do is to bring this current outbreak under control. Yes, I agree. And so we have been working two weeks. It did not get the desired results. So we have extended it for another two weeks. And we believe that it will come under control. That is what we're doing for us. We will then move forward while we're doing that to get people vaccinated. And if enough people get vaccinated, it reduces the need for us to do these strict restrictions again. But if we have to do them, we have in place a state of emergency that allows us to do so. It does not mean it's going to be rigid. People can't come out of the house. We had it there for the last couple of weeks, a shelter in place, but people came out. But they abused it. They abused it. And we appeal to people, we urge people, for two weeks, we strict your movement. We get this under control, we relax again, as we did last year, and we relax, and we relax. But almost here, a certain minister next to me telling me, we'll be able to go to CCPL, and we'll be able to do cultural armor, if we get it under control, if we get vaccinated. 
It is the plan. You said the Ekman plan is a very clear plan. But we need the tools to do so. And we go until December. Because it doesn't mean in December we'll have coffee all night and lockdown. But in case you don't need to tweak a restriction here and there, we keep it in place. And if it is, we are confident that this is not necessary. We come back to Parliament and revoke it. It can be revoked at any time. Get the Governor General to proclaim a revocation. Because we need this now to get people settled, to be able to reduce, to stop this current outbreak so we could move forward properly. Mr. Speaker, let's be clear. I hear about the, the, the legal basis. I had a whole speech about the Constitution and about fundamental rights, about the right freedom to move, rights of assembly and association, and all those things. But I just want to read just one point out of the, the Constitution on that point. Because there's a phrase that's important to, for people to know. And this is section 14 of the Constitution. A person shall not be deprived of his freedom of movement. That is to say, the right to move freely throughout St. Christopher and Nevis. The right to reside in any part of St. Christopher and Nevis. The right to enter St. Christopher and Nevis. The right to leave St. Christopher and Nevis. And immunity from expulsion from St. Christopher and Nevis. But there is a proviso that notwithstanding that, for the interests of defense, public safety, or public order. And we are talking about public health and public order, public safety. Uh, that's what we are dealing with. There may have to be that we suspend this. The something done on the that level is shown not to be reasonably justifiable in a democratic society. And what is reasonably justifiable in a democratic society? We say, in our democratic society, that we restrict movements to be able to get the pandemic under control. That's what the state of emergency is. We have all sorts of state of emergencies. We have had state of emergency in this country. And that's the Constitution. Under that Constitution, that's section 19 of the Constitution, we have propagated Emergency Powers Act and Regulations. Going all the way back to 1967. That's when it was brought into force. I don't even want to go and talk about 1967. But we had states emergency back then. We have had curfews under the law of emergency. We have had some of them that we were a little suspicious about. But the law provides for it. In 1973, we had a one square mile state of emergency in this country because Kennedy Simmons, Dr. Simmons as he was then, had a piece of land that he wanted to grow other crops. The government back then said he must plant sugar and put bulldozers and army to make him plant sugar and he won land. He got arrested for that state of emergency. We have had state of emergency in 1993 when people throw bottle and stone because they don't like the outcome of an election. An unrest. That's not so. Let's not debate it. Yeah, and we could debate it another time. Want, right? You want me to go into it? I don't need to go into it. I'm not I don't need to go into it. But states of emergency happen from time to time. And it's a tool that the state uses to get public safety, public order. And for our cases this time, it's about public health. And the Honorable Prime Minister, the mover of the resolution, made the point that we have neighbors of ours, Antigua, Barbados, all of them have state of emergencies. Their state of emergencies have been longer than ours, sometimes since last year, and they extend and they extend because they need that tool to be able to manage the state of emergency, the, uh, manage the COVID response to pand the pandemic. That is what it's about. And so, I never expected us to come down this road, to tell you the truth. Oh. I thought it was something that the country understood, 
the country would support, and I hope the, the, the member for number the right honorable gentleman opposite, Mr. Speaker, keep coming close and stepping back, close and stepping back. That he ain't really said he support it. Are you, you I said vaccination, I'm talking about this, what we're doing today. You, you have not said. We need to why know if you support it. Why six months? But I've explained it. I need to go back again. I don't need to go over it. So let's talk about suffering. What is the support? Let's talk about suffering. You have a number of countries in this, con in this Caribbean. We are one of the smallest populations. And you want me to go there? Because $120 million worth of stimulus. No other country in the region has done that. None other country has done that. Huh? We are about 47, 47 population, population, 1,000 population in the last census. Yeah. Barbados, how much? Huh? What about the population Barbados? How many hundred thousands? Huh? The went to the IMF, you say? Where are you going to? Where are you going to? This is what talking about IMF. Look what talking about IMF. Mr. IMF. Mr. IMF. Yeah? And, and the question is that the question is that we have shown to the public and this country that this government has done at all levels, all levels, support for the people of this country. All levels. And we will do it and continue. We are doing it and we'll continue. Food vouchers, care packages. The social services and the partner do that every day. Politically distributed. Every day they do that. Every day. To say that nothing happening. Party, Mr. Speaker, this state of emergency is reasonably justifiable in our country today on the grounds of public health. This is the phrasing of the Constitution. And under Section 19 of the Constitution, the Governor General has the authority to introduce a state of emergency up to 21 days. We are currently under that state of emergency. If we need to extend that state of emergency, the National Assembly has to approve a resolution to extend it. We can do so up to a period of 12 months or any time less than that, that is so specified. And Mr. Speaker, this executive, this government, the members on the government benches are here to come to the, cabinet, to the, to the National Assembly to be able to extend the current state of emergency up to the 31st of December, 2021. It will be a shorter period than the state of emergency last year. Well, it was similar, because we went from March to, I think it was October, November. And no, we went to December. We went to December. So we actually went down all the way down to the end of December. Mr. Speaker, we are not as long as last year, but we believe and are confident with the advice we are having from our medical fraternity that we will get a handle on this. I have to say a word to our citizens that they have to behave responsibly. Either during the state of emergency, with a conform to the restrictions that have been put up. Or even after we come out of this period of restrictions, restricted behavior, um, living, that we have to change our behavior. We want our citizens to religiously wear the face mask, whether you have a vaccine or not. More so if you don't have a vaccine, because it's your way to protect yourself. You must wear your face mask. Some people feel that you wear two face masks is even greater protection. But if, as a, the medical um, fraternity um, experts are saying, we have a strain of the virus, a variant of the virus, that seems more virile, that is more aggressive than before. 
or huh? in spreading. In spreading. That's yeah. right. Okay. We have we have to be even more careful about how we behave. And the number one is you. Number one is your behavior. You wear your mask, sanitize, and be careful about the crowd you get into. You ain't scorning nobody. But just be careful. Distance yourself. Because in doing so, you protect yourself. As I said earlier, and the medical people have convinced me, but I hear them, that even if you're vaccinated, you could have a viral load, a low viral load nonetheless. But if you have an old grandmother at home, a relative at home, you could spread it to them. And those underlying conditions can be good for them. We in Sankis and Nevis have to adopt new ways of living and behavior going forward. Whether we open up or we still have these restrictions, we have to change how we live. But I say a special word to those who are unvaccinated. You are as a citizen of this country like anyone else. And the rights and freedoms in our constitution are for the minority as just as much as they are for the majority. You have the same rights as everybody else. And so our duty is to protect you as much as it is to protect those who have vaccines. We believe that you have to be protected from this virus. We are confident that eventually you'll be convinced to take the virus. The vaccine. The vaccine, sorry. It might take a little time for you to understand it and allay your fears, but we believe that you will do it. We urge you, we encourage you, we appeal to you to do it. In the meantime, protect yourself. Wear your mask. Wear two masks. Wash your hands. Watch your social distancing. Be careful. Because if it is that we restrain and constrain the spread of this virus, we get back the type of life we want to. Business could work. We could play. We could go games. We could go to the beach and do things that we want to do. But that is what we are here for today. To try and give you a cover to the extension of the state of emergency to see how we can continue to have restrictions that may help to protect you, your lives, of you and your loved ones. Mr. Speaker, I could go on and on and on, but I thought I had to respond to a couple of things that were said earlier by the member for number six. Sometimes you wonder if he's making joke. Sometimes he, you know what I mean? Some, sometimes he has to grandstand or whatever it is, but it does give me an opportunity to respond to some of the things he has said. I hope that he will join us in voting for the resolution to show that as a senior medical doctor in our country, eh, as a former prime minister, that he will support this resolution and help us have it passed here today, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wish that this resolution will have a safe passage to this honorable house. May it please you, Mr. Speaker.